Hello everyone. Today we're going to be doing our first sorting algorithm and this is the quick sort algorithm. Now quick sort algorithm is a very efficient uh, sorting algorithm and um, well it's an in place algorithm like selection sort and insertion sort and uh, it is a divide it has a divide and conquer approach. Now all these algorithms that we have been doing were greedy algorithms or dynamic programming but this one is in a divide and conquer approach because it divides the uh, the problems into two sub problems or more depending on the algorithm I mean for this in this case it uh, divides it into two sub problems and then uh, recursively tries to go back to its base case and then solve the problem using another uh, method that's given in this case the partition method now the algorithm the simulation is pretty easy it's really fun but uh, compared to other sorting algorithms this simulation does require a lot of time to you know uh, get the hang of so let's just let's just look at the algorithm here this is the quick sort the recursive call algorithm now if this is the base case if p is less than r p is the starting point r is the finishing point and q is the one that we divide the algorithm i mean divide the whole problem into two sets q is the middle part i mean the middle pivot, middle point and uh, this is the recursive call quick sort a p q minus 1 that is it's this is the first part divides it into first when it's divided once and a q plus 1 r is the second second half of it. This is the first half and this is the second half. So let's look at the algorithm, the partition algorithm. First, we choose a pivot. Now, quick sort can be done in three ways. I mean, it can have three kinds of pivots. One is the first element can be the pivot, the last element can be the pivot, or the middle element can be the pivot. For this example, we're going to be using the first, uh, first element as the pivot. So here, x is the pivot. x is the uh, pivotal element so AP and I is the p pivotal uh, what you called um, index number so I equals P this is P and this is uh, this is Q in this case but in the whole algorithm it is P and R and this is Q somewhere in the middle but for this since the parameter naming doesn't matter we're naming it Q doesn't matter you can name it R as well but for you know since P and Q there, since they're just we're just dealing with two uh, elements only I mean two indexes only so we name this Q anyway let's move on to the algorithm so first I equals P so for J equals P plus 1 to Q in the beginning of the simulation I would suggest that you keep the algorithm in front of you and then try to do the simulation because you, you might tend to forget it so let's move on to it so 6 uh, and then let's move on to J j is this one and then when aj is less than equal x that time i plus plus since aj is not less than equal s it's greater than x so we don't increase it so um, let's move on to the next j which is this 13 is greater than 6 so we don't increment i so let's move on to the next j which is this 5 is less than 6 so we increment i so i is this one now and then after that, uh, what you call, we swap AI and AJ. So this is AI and this is AJ. So we swap 10 and 5. So let's swap it. 5 here, 10 here. All right. So then we move on to the next J. Well, this J is still greater than 6, so we don't uh, increment I. 3 is uh, uh, less than 6, so we do increment I. Let's move on to this and then i is increased. So we swap again we swap ai and aj so 3 and 13 is swapped. This is 13 and this is 3. All right so then let's move on to the next uh, sorry let's move on to the next j which is this and then since 2 is less than 6 so we do increment i again so i is here so we swap 10 and 2 so let's swap it 2 10 there's 2 there's 10 all right so then again we increment j and 11 is greater than 6 so we don't increment i so now the next part is we swap ap and ai i'm sorry for the handwriting here you can check out the proper algorithm with within your textbook or um, I'll, in, in any of the, like, if you just search in the internet, you can get the quick sort algorithm properly. We swap AP and AI. And AP is what? This one, that is X. And AI is what? This one, too. So 2 and 6, 
we swap. So let's swap it. There's two. So two, six. And then we return i. So now we divide, we make this the dividing point. That means we return i to here, to q. Because this is a partition method here. So now q is the dividing point. So there will be two divisions. One is from a, p, q minus 1. So two divisions recursively, like a binary tree. 2, 5, 3. And another is 8, 13, 10, 11. And the first element is always the pivot. Let's change the color. Yeah. All right. So the first element is always the pivot. 2 is the pivot here. So again, we do the partition method here. Now, x equals ap. This is x. And this is i. This is j. So we uh, then uh, we move on to the algorithm. If aj less than equal x, well, j is not less than equal x, so we don't increment i. So then we move on to the next j. 3 is greater than 2, so we don't increment i again. So we swap, so we don't need to go to this swap process either. We don't, because we don't enter this if function at all. So we go to this swap, ap and ai. So ap is this and ai is also this. It's the same thing. p and i are in the same position. So we don't need to uh, swap it. So now we divide it into two parts. Well, we just get two, one part here, 5 and 3, because 2 is already here. And then for this one, let's we have to do like when we're doing recursive calls, just remember that all these steps, steps in one level are done at the same time. You don't finish. I mean, when you think about the computer wise, how the computer does it is that they solve these two sub problems at the same time. They don't solve like they, they just they don't, it's not like they solve this one whole tree. And then after they're done with this tree, then they go to the other tree and solve. It's not like that. So it's better when you when you do the simulation that time. Also, you have this good practice of doing solving. The two parts of one tree, I mean, of one level of a binary tree at the same time. All right, so here the first, this 8 is the pivot. All right, so this is x and this is i and then j. So j, well, this is greater than 8, so we don't uh, go to the if function. And then again, j, this is greater than uh, 8, so we don't again increment it. And again, this j is greater, so we don't increment. So p and i with the same position, we swap a p and a i. I'm sorry if I'm going too fast. It's kind of hot in here. Anyway, so we uh, swap P and I, A, P and A, I, and well, it remains the same. So we divide this tree into two parts. Well, we just get one part, 13, 10, and 11. All right, so let's do this with, well, let's do the call with this part. Here it's X, I, and J. Well, J is, the this part, A, J is greater than, I mean, it's less than X. So we increment I. So we swap, I mean, uh, yeah, we increment i, and then we swap a i and a j. Well, a i and a j are the same thing, so we don't need to swap it. But we do have to swap p a p. This is a p. a p and a i. So we get, what do we get? 3 and 5. So let's swap. Here it becomes 3, here it becomes 5. 3, 5. All right. And let's do it for the same, let's do it for this one also. Let's just change the color. It's getting bored of this color. All right. So 13 is the pivot. And then uh, it's it's X again. I mean, X is AP. Anyway, X. And then this is I. And this is J. Well, J is, I mean, AJ is less, uh, AJ is less than X. So we increment I. I comes here. All right. And then AI and AJ. We, we swap AI and AJ. Well, AI and AJ are the same thing, so we don't need to swap it. So we move on to the next J. Again, I is incremented. Uh, what you call? Yeah, I is, first I is incremented because AJ is less than 13. I mean, thir 11 is less than 13. So I is incremented. I comes here. We swap AJ and AI. Well, AJ and AI are in the same position, so we don't need to swap it. So then we swap AP and AI. Here it's AP and this is AI. So we swap 13 and 11. So let's swap it. 13 and 11. This becomes 11 and this becomes 13. All right. So, we, so this is the this is the i we return i. So this 11 and 10 is divided again. So 11 and 10. Now 11 is the pivot and then x. So i j. Well, a j is less than x. 
So we we swap A I and A J. I is incremented. We uh, we swap A I and A J. It still remains in the same position. So then we swap A P and A I. Well, A P is this and A I is this. So ten and eleven we swap. So this becomes ten, and this becomes eleven. All right. So this is the final one. Now let's try to arrange this tree. Uh, let's try to arrange this tree. So first comes two, and then comes like to try to see it in this position. So three, and then and then we have five, and then we have in this position six, and then it's eight, and then it's ten, and then it's eleven, and then we have thirteen. All right, so this is the final answer. This is the final sorted output. Now, uh, as you can see, it's sorted in ascending order. So yeah, that's about it for this uh, simulation. Uh, when, whenever there will be a question that you have to do the partition, try to understand the algorithm. You have to, if you, ha if they say that you have to do the per per partition till the second second recursive call. I mean, the second partition call it goes to up to this level. And if it's just third partition call, it just, just goes to up to this level. Don't do it more than these uh, levels because maybe they'll cut marks. If there's a question like that, just like write the do the simulation of the quick sort algorithm up to this up to the second partition call. Well, this is the first partition call. This is the first partition call, and then this is the second partition call. And this is the third partition call. This is the fourth partition call. Fifth, sixth, you know, likewise. All right, uh, this was the whole algorithm too, and the analysis of uh, the quicksort algorithm is, well, let's look at the analysis. Quicksort analysis, all right. So the quicksort, uh, this quicksort is order of n, lo uh, n square in the worst case, and it is order of n log n in the best case. Uh, in the worst case, it's order of n square because it becomes n square, it becomes the worst case in what situation? When it's fully sorted or when the pivot is the highest element, I mean the highest value element or the, or, or the lowest value element. That time what will happen? That time the tree will be slanted in one way. That means in this way there will be no tree growing, it's just it's going to be in this one way. Like this one that we have seen, there was no element here, we just had to do it here. So this whole, the, the whole tree will be in a slanted way. And there will be no element on the left side of the tree, binary tree, if it's a binary tree. So that's why it will be order of n square. But otherwise, it will be order of n log n because, well, we can, as we can see, there there's always two divisions most of the time. I mean, you can just, like, it's, it can be negligible ones, but most of the time it has two, two divisions, two recursive calls. So the height of the tree is log, log base 2 of n. And the number of leaves is n. So the whole complexity is order of n log n. So yeah, uh, I hope you understood the tutorial and uh, please like and subscribe if you want more CS tutorials and well, good luck.